Please be seated for a moment. So welcome to St. Munchen Church. Welcome to all the people outside watching as well as we gather to celebrate the funeral Mass for Phil Danner. And on behalf of all who are watching on live stream and all of us outside and here in the church, we offer our deepest sympathy to Phil's family, especially to her sons, Ted, Aidan, Declan and Brendan, to our daughters Anne, Breed, Bernadette and Lourdes, to our brothers John and Michael, to our sister Madeline, to our daughters-in-law, sons-in-law, 16 grandchildren, three great-grandchildren, nephews, nieces, relatives and friends. We offer you our deepest sympathy. We support you in our prayer and love as we come to honour and celebrate Phil. I also welcome all on live stream, as I said, but a special way we remember her two grandchildren who can't be here, Kevin, who's in Australia, and then Barry and Gemma and family in Canada. So we welcome them who are watching and celebrating with us in Australia and Canada. Madeline can't be here as well, Phil's sister, so I was with her this morning and we uh, support her with our love and she's with us spiritually, also John and Michael, her two brothers. So we give Phil the greatest gift and I thank Father Erwin for allowing me to celebrate this Mass as we come to honour Phil. So we stand and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace, the peace, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so as we gather to entrust our dearly beloved Phil back to the God who gave her life, we come knowing that she now received the fullness of life yesterday afternoon when God called her home. And so we honour her by celebrating the gift of her faith, the gift of Holy Mass. As we entrust Phil into God's mercy and love. And now for ourselves, we come into that mercy as we acknowledge we need it and say sorry for our sins. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord of mercy. Lord Jesus, your Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and happiness of saints, Give, we pray, to your servant Phil, from whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share in your chosen ones and the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, she may come before your face and rejoice in the presence of God. And we ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now as we invite Breed up for the first reading, then Anne will sing the psalm, and then John Edward will read the second reading for us, proclaim us. First reading, a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to break down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything suitable for its time. This is the word of the Lord. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, we are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. This is the word of the Lord. Make your home in me as I make mine in you, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, I am the living bread which has come down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh the life of the world. Then the Jews started arguing with one another, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus replied, I tell you most solemnly, if you do not eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you will not have life in you. And anyone who does eat my flesh and drink my blood has eternal life and I shall raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is real food, 
and my blood is real drink. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood lives in me and I live in him. As I, who am sent by the living Father, myself draw life from the Father, so whoever reads me will draw life from me. This is the bread come down from heaven, not like the bread our ancestors ate, they are dead, but anyone who eats this bread will live forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be seated now for a few minutes. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. I read a statement a couple of months ago and I loved it. And the statement goes, God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. And someone wrote one time that we're spiritual beings having ex human experience. We're born and we will all die. And in between we eat, sleep, work, play, dress ourselves, make mistakes, and so on and so on. And in the midst of physical events, our spirits are growing. Our spirits have been shaped. We learn, we explore, we open up, we shut down, we experience pain and grief, we experience healing, and hopefully through the many ups and downs of our eternal and internal experience, we learn to love. Our human nature and our divine nature, if you like, are intertwined. Phil O'Shea, born on the 17th of September 1934, to Matthew and Mary Ann of Borogui Raquel. Phil was the eldest of six children. Meeting the love of her life, Ned Danaher, who had a true, perfect gentleman and getting married on the 7th of January, 1958, in the Holy Rosary Church in Limerick, rearing you, nine children, Anne, Breed, Bernadette, Ted, Aidan, Declan, Brendan, Lourdes, and Dermot. Phil, in her younger years, after school, worked and trained with Miss Bavanizer and Raquel in the clothes industry. From there, she came to Newcastle West and worked in Kindy's Drapery and then back to Ballangarry in Foley's. And of course, that all changed then when she met this handsome young man from Nakaderi, Ned, and got married. And they lived a life together. And so you family, children, you come today to honour your mother. You have your special memories. You know that Mam was amazing, generous to a fault in a sense of giving and giving and giving herself. And today you come to give thanks for all the ways she smiled and looked after and nurtured and made you who you are. So you treasure the gift of this special woman in your life. Then her grand, 16 grandchildren, she loved and adored, many of them she reared as well. And so you have your own special memories of how Nana spied you and cared for you and made you who you are. Because your Nana was a woman who loved, who gave, and who nurtured you. And then rejoicing in her three great grandchildren, she celebrated their lives as well. Phil knew pain and loss in her life. Her son, Dermot, in 1975, called home to God as a child, as a baby. So she knew that pain, Ned herself knew that pain, and as you did too. But she coped with the 
grace and the power of God. And then losing Ned in 1984 on the 2nd of July, called home to God as well. But she then became, for you, mother and dad, and rearing you and sharing and being there for you. We all long for a home. We yearn for a place where we belong, where we're safe, where we can rest. We long for a place where we can share memories and create new ones. Well, your mum, your nana shared and created so many memories for you, and today you rejoice in the gift of her. Phil was a quiet woman, a woman with a great heart, a heart full of gold, as you've heard that statement. A true lady, a good person, a straight person, a no-nonsense person, but very humble person. In life, Phil was unassuming, warm-hearted, a welcome of people. She loved people, and she was blessed with a gentle and at times mischievous sense of humor. She loved the crack, she loved the fun, loved the banter, and she enjoyed that so much. She was a true gentle soul. What about Ned had been her competition? Her we love for we Daniel. She loved Daniel and all about him. And so she many times she went to his shows and experienced his beautiful music and she loved this. Then Mrs. Mackay here in Nakaderi, they used to go for walks every day, so they had a great relationship and we do remember Mrs. Mackay who's gone before us. So all of these memories, all of the gift of her life. I was talking to Madeline this morning and all the, their growing up in Borowi and all the ways they shared so much together. We give thanks. Phil had tremendous, deep, profound faith. Her love of the Eucharist, we heard as Father Erwin read that beautiful Gospel, Jesus saying, I am the living bread has come down from heaven. I know who eats this bread will live forever. The bread that I shall give is my flesh for the life of the world. She was nurtured and fed by the Eucharist in Raquel and younger years here in Nakadere most of her life, and in giving her strength and grace. And then the rosary, as I said last night, the rosary was so important. And Ned and herself and the whole family, Dan, our family, were important to praying to Mary, getting grace and strength. And so we give thanks. We give thanks for her life of love, her life of generosity, her life of giving, her life that made you who you are. But she trusted in God's mercy too. And as today we ask God to forgive her for any weakness and failings of her life, and anything that she needed, his grace and help. So we give thanks. There is a time to be born and a time to die. So the 17th of September 1934, and then the 2nd of March yesterday, 2021, to be born into eternal life. And so it is appropriate that she love God and ooze God for you. You make God through her love her love of family, her neighbours and friends. Truly, we could say today, her house was in order. She was ready to meet God. She was a true living Christian who loved God and loved people. And so as we come to the end of a journey, it is a good day for Phil. An earthly journey has ended, but a heavenly residence has been established. That's our hope. That's our confidence, that's our expectation, that's Phil's expectation. And so beyond our natural sorrow, there is a supernatural joy that comes from knowing the reality of Jesus who saves us, the reality of God's love who loves us immensely, the reality of forgiveness, the reality of new birth, and the reality of heaven. And so also, the reality of future reunion. One of the things I was reminiscing and pondering, what a joy to meet Ned again. Dermot, her parents, Eileen and Martha gone before her. What a joy for her to meet them. And so in celebration, 
Think of the love that the fathers lavish on us. We heard John Edward Reed. Think of the love that she lavished on you. you she oozed love, she gave love, and enjoyed life to the full. Yes, it is true to say, as I opened the statement, God never sees his children die. He simply sees them coming home. And so this day, praise God for Phil Danner. Praise God, praise God. May she continue to care for us and look out for us and help us from her room in heaven. May she, her gentle soul rest in peace. Amen. So now we stand for the praise of faithful and we invite Lourdes first, then Holly, Quiva, Caitlin and Clara. So, loving God, we come with our needs before you. As we celebrate the gift of life, we come with our needs, knowing that you will answer them. We pray for Mom's family. May they find strength and consolation from their trust in your goodness of God and from the loving support of the community. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray in thanksgiving for all who cared for Nana in her recent time of illness, especially all the staff in St. Catherine's nursing home. May they be blessed in their work of caring for the sick. Lord, hear us. For the loved ones that have gone before us, we remember them today. We remember especially her husband, Ned, her son, Dermot, her parents, Marianne and Matthew, her sisters Eileen and Martha and all the deceased members of the Danaher and O'Shea families, as well as her other relatives and friends, may God bring them into the light of his presence. Lord, hear us. We pray that as we honour Nana Phil, we will draw inspiration from her life and be renewed in our commitment to family and community so we can have a greater appreciation of the goodness of others. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. In baptism, Nana was given the Pledge of Eternal Life. May she now be admitted to the company of all the saints. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And so a quiet moment as we remember Phil, Nana. We ask God to bless us as we celebrate our life. Bless all who are watching, bless all who are outside, who honour her this day. And bless their intentions and their hearts, Lord. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious. Loving God, hear our prayers and the ones in our hearts. We make them with expectant faith to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated now as Anne, Aidan and Mark will bring up the gifts, please.
Please stand and praise us, umbrellas, that our sacrifice may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Phil, we beseech your love and mercy, that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is you right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, to Christ our Lord. In him the hope of the blessed resurrection is done, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled with the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. When this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with the angels and the archangels and the thrones and the minions and the hosts of the piles of heaven, we proclaim your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, the full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. So we kneel now for the Eucharist of Prayer number 3 as we ask the Holy Spirit to change the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. And that Spirit will heal and renew and comfort us as we celebrate Phil. You are indeed, Holy Lord, and all your great and right to give us your praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the power and the work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a few sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, for the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself to pray and give you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, and his ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one Spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope, Brendan our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the religious and clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Phil, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform all our bodies after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters, as we remember our husband Ned, our son Dermot, our parents, Mary Ann and Matthew, our sisters Eileen and Martha, Mrs. Mackay, for all relations, family and friends, neighbours. And all are pleasing to you at the past in this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when every tear we wipe away from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we should become like you and praise you without end. To Christ our Lord, to whom we bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So we stand as one family in the love of Phil, in the love of God. We praise him now as we say together Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. And so we pray for that. Peace, peace within our hearts, peace within our lives and our families. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, who graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And so as we can't offer each other the sign of peace, but from our hearts to our hearts, we offer that peace inwardly to each other. May this mean in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. The Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, to mercy us. The Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, to mercy us. The Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, and through your death gave life to the world. Free us by this most holy body and blood from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us always faithful to your commandments and never let us depart from you.
This is the living Jesus. This is the one who saves us, who offers us new life, who's prepared a home for us in the banquet of heaven. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, should I enter on the mouth, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ to the sake for eternal life. Amen. So those watching now, just open your hearts so those outside, and Father Aaron will go out, but those who are watching, just invite Jesus now into your heart, into your soul, and let him bless you with the power and the gift of the Eucharist.
light and guard, tool and guide and aim. And as she great devotion to Mary, as we heard and sing Our Lady of Knock, we entrust ourselves now into that care of Mary. Mary will help us in the days and months ahead. Pray for all who can be here in the church, all outside and all watching a live stream, that Mary will guide us in every way. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, pray for us. Saint Pio, Saint Munchen, and Saint Philomena, pray for us. Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, lovingly and mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our sister Phil may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Please be seated now as we invite Declan up to say a few words to us. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I kind of got a bit of a layer call up to do, to do this, so I just put a small few words together. I won't keep you long. Just a few thank yous. Um, first of all, I would like to thank Father Michael and Father Urban. Beautiful Mass today. I'd like to thank Don O'Brady. Um, the man was excellent for the last few days. Anything we asked him to do, he was there, he'd done it. Musicians, beautiful, thank you. And of course, Johnny for doing the live stream as well. Thanks, Johnny. Um, what can I say? Uh, we're a family. We're a family of eight. Um, I was well down the line myself and Brendan. I think we got the hardest rearing because um, if we sat at the dinner table, we were always a two that were pushed out of the way. Lord, it was young and us. It was PT taking and hard. Um, so we didn't turn out too well, I suppose. Um, What I say about mom? Um, she was, she was a lady, I suppose. Um, loved her religion, her prayers, um, her Daniel and Donald, of course. And it was just a pity that he did call her one day in in Saint Itis after she getting the stroke a few years ago, and it was just a pity that she wasn't in her full senses to appreciate him a bit more than she did. Um, because she wasn't back to her full health at that time. Um, she got a stroke when she was 70, 71 was it? And I don't think she deserved to get it at that time. She's suffered a bit for the last 14, 15 years. Um, I think, yes, there was a happy day for her eventually because um, she, she did suffer. Um, there was one song that she got me to learn a few years ago um, and any time we used to have a party or anything like that I used to have to sing it at it so for mom I'm going to sing two verses of it for the last time and sorry now for my singing might be great but I'm going to sing it anyway for her okay and it goes like this Johnny was born in a mansion down in the county of Clare. Rosie was born by the roadside, somewhere in County Kildare. Destiny brought them together on the road near Cologlan one day. In her bright, pretty shawl she was singing. These are the words she did say, for she sang me, me tonight by the campfire. Come with me over the hill. Let us be married tomorrow. Please let me whisper, I will. What if the neighbors are talking? Who cares if your friends stop and stare? You'll be proud to be married to Rosie, who was reared on the roads of Kildare. That was for you, Mom. We love you. Bye. Thank you.
Thank you, Declan. Wouldn't you feel sorry for Declan and Brendan? Okay. They suffered all their lives, did you? All their lives. God help us. Anyway, well done, uh, Declan. So now we come to the final farewell, so we stand for our final prayers accommodation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Phil. May our farewell express our affection for her. May these our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. So now Father Erwin will bless her remains with holy water as a reminder of her birth into Christ in St. Mary's and Raquel and now her birth into Christ in eternal life. And then as she was a temple of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwelled within her. And so we honour her body with incense today. Let the instant remind us of our prayers going up to God in thanksgiving for Phil. Our response, receive her soul and present her to God most high. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Eternal rest can to fill, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God most high. Into your hands, Father, mercies, we commend our sister Phil in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We truly give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Nana Phil in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness, of your love, and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us this afternoon. Listen to our prayers and open the gate of paradise to your servant Phil and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and our sister Phil forever and ever. Phil, may the angels lead you in the paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham, where Lazarus is poor no longer. May you find eternal rest. In peace, in a few moments, we'll take our sister Phil to our place of rest. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us here in the church, all outside and all watching, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go and give thanks to the Lord. Thanks be to God.